Hey YouTube, Ace Pinkter yet again. I get asked pretty frequently about how to create glitch type um, drums and I think uh, personally the trick to using or the trick to having effective sounding glitch is to have a little bit of randomness and a little bit of order. Um, I'm going to do this with a Dr. Rex but you can also do this with any, um, any drum pattern you want. If you got a redrum, that's fine. If you are using a redrum, uh, don't forget that your redrum has these options on the back for gate output. And what you do is create something like a subtractor. I know I'm moving pretty fast here, but um, your subtractors have percussion pads as, as part of the factory sound bank. And what we can do is load up something like that, zap drum. And all we do is connect the gate from the redrum channel to our subtractor. Now every time we trigger our drum, it actually triggers the subtractor. And that's pretty cool because we have all these options here at our disposal that we can mess with and get really different sound and effects out of it. In fact, um, it will also it will also go on your it'll it'll base the sound off of your velocity too, which is good. So um, you can make full use out of these panels here to get a pretty wide variety of effects. And don't forget that you can do that. And in fact, since you have 10 outputs, you can do that 10 times. And it doesn't have to be a subtractor. You can use any sound effect at all. Anything with a gate input will take signal from redrum. But like I said, I'm going to do this with Dr. Rex um, for a few reasons. And uh, one of those reasons is that it takes too damn long to set up a, a, a redrum panel. But um, my little trick here is I'm going to send this to track. And let's listen to that, see what it sounds like. Not too bad. Now I can get a cheap randomized glitch sounding effect here just by changing the patch. Alright, not too bad. We did get some, some variety out of that. It doesn't quite sound the same. Um, what I'm going to do right now, tell you what, this is uh, what else I like to do. I like to speed it up by about double. And notice how it compresses that. And I'm going to copy it again so that it's twice there. I'm going to select every block except the first and the fifth. And I'm going to come down here and just randomize the hell out of them by pressing alter notes. So now if we look at them, you'll see that it has one intact measure. You should be able to see this. It has one measure which is intact, and then after that it's just this cloud of pretty crazy random patterns. Okay, now there's a lot more to doing glitch than just messing up a drum pattern. We need some effects. We need some good effects here. And uh, my first suggestion for having glitch type music, put your sequencer in record mode, and let's just let's just automate the hell out of this. Okay, once we have a quick level of automation there, we're going to do the neat stuff. Alright, first thing you're going to want to use is probably a compressor. I didn't wire that up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a compressor, and I'm going to create a filter, which we won't use right away. So I'm going to put this in bypass mode. Next, I'm going to create an RV7000 reverb. There's a good reason for that. I want you to use this one, and I'll get to it in a moment and also a scream distortion. So all of these have been chained together automatically exactly the way I want. Now um, I'm gonna bypass the scream for now. We're gonna talk about this RV7000 because it has this great feature that I think goes unused and that's the gate mode. Let's listen to it right now. That's not gonna work at all. I'm gonna switch this to 
echo mode, and I'm going to give it a very quick echo, about 35 milliseconds. Um, anywhere from 50 to 100, or 50 to 10 milliseconds is probably what you want to use, and it will determine the pitch of this echo signal. Let's give it a pretty high uh, decay as well. Let's listen to this now. That sounds good. Let's keep it at about 15. Now I'm going to set my dry and wet for about half. We're going to go to gate mode. Notice this trig source. Set this for MIDI CV. And what you should do now, select your reverb and create a matrix pattern sequencer. Give it a pattern real quick that's simple, just looks something like that. And what that's going to do is that once we turn on this gate enable mode, this is going to trigger our gate. So let's hear it. It should do something. Now you can get more elaborate with it if you want to throw in more gates. Or if you want some real randomness, give it an odd numbered step count. That will cause it to drift. That's just one of the things we can do here. Um, we can do the same thing. If you want to use a matrix, you can do the same thing for your scream. All we got to do is connect, say, the curve to our damage control. I like to use fuzz mode for um, glitch type effects. And then we just throw in some... Now you might also want to automate your scream, in fact that's probably the best way to do it, so I'm going to create a sequence track for the scream. And you can just kind of have fun with it in that way, you get a pretty random sounding effect out of it. Now. At this point, uh, we've already gotten some pretty severe randomness, and uh, now let's talk about a way to put order back into it. I can, of course, go through and sort of uh, touch up these patterns, um, but what I'm going to do, since I've got this filter that we're not using, uh, this is kind of a cool effect. I'm going to create sequencer track for filter 1, and here it is. You should be able to see that. Uh, there's nothing in there. Now, what I'm going to do is select my filter, we're going to go back up to Dr. Rex and I'm going to export the track data to my filter. This means that every time the original pattern would have thrown a note to our Dr. Rex, it's going to trigger our filter gate. Now I'm actually going to go in here and slow the tempo down by half. That should make it a bit easier to hear the difference. So uh, let's make this filter work for us. I know it's going to trigger every time these gates hit, so uh, let's check out how it sounds right now. We have almost nothing coming through. Now notice that that brings a bit more rhythm and a bit more control into the beat. Simply by triggering the free, the filter on these original notes, it's going to cause our it's going to cause our high frequencies to come through. Now you can also do that with a matrix if you want, that might be more uh, simplistic and it won't have these little triplets and whatnot in there, but um, I think this sounds pretty cool. So um, that's a cool way to use the RV7000 if you haven't seen it. And also, um, a lot of randomness can be introduced by using these matrix with offset patterns or offset um, step counts. They don't have to be even numbers. They don't have to be divisible. You can um, play around with them at your leisure. All right, um, those are just a few of the techniques you can use. But of course, it depends on the song that you're trying to uh, achieve. The end result is going to be up to your ears. I just wanted to share a few of the methods you can use to get there. This is Ace Pinkter, signing out.